So recently I've kind of gotten back into using the skulk sensor and it's kind of dragged me into the world of trap design again because it's without a shadow of a doubt one of the most useful tools for player detection and that leads to being able to set up a lot of different interesting things. And today we're kind of talking about pitfall design, and one of the kind of really interesting and unique things I think about pitfalls is that they're not really an effective standalone trap. Really, where the pitfall shines the most is sort of as a connecting bridge to other possibilities, because the pitfall on its own is just a pit somebody can build out of it with just any amount of blocks. But it's what you put at the bottom of that pit that actually transforms the trap into something real. You see, I could put a spike pit, I could put lava, more bombs, and it's the pitfall that kind of opens up the paths to all these other possibilities. Or you could just forego all of them and just go for the friendly, harmless trap, where you put literally nothing at the bottom of the pit. You give them a good scare and they build out and move on. And that's the power of the pitfall. It's all up to you what you put, do with it. We're also going to be mentioning some other tidbits, but I swear the main topic is pitfalls. All it operates on is just a simple end crystal attached to a skull sensor and some kind of clever mechanics, but let's start at the very 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 beginning. So recently I've been messing a lot around with end crystals, and that's anything from designing incredibly powerful explosives to even just tree farms, and both of those projects are in the description, but it's messing around with them a bit more that kind of let me think about what more I could do with them. And it's now that I kind of remember this really really weird fact about end crystals where if you try to move them while they're on fire, they literally just explode. And this is kind of why back then when end crystals were a little bit less renewable, people would kind of move them around, but first they'd have to put out the fire, and then now they could push them around to their heart's content. The reason why I was suddenly brought to this fact was because I was kind of searching for a faster way to explode end crystals. The method I was using was using snowballs which actually looks pretty instant, but there's actually a four tick delay between when you p apply power to the dispenser and when it actually fires. That's exactly 0.2 seconds, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but in a life and death situation, like trapping somebody, you want to make sure that they have as little time to react as possible. Interestingly enough, this never actually ended up being a problem for the end crystal landmine because the thing is is that it takes a pretty long time for the end crystal to actually make it up to the surface. Still pretty short, only about 0.55 seconds. But that's more than enough time to start pre-firing the dispenser so that the snowball hits it when it's ready to explode. So it was already exploding as fast as possible despite the delay. Yet in the world of pitfalls, we don't have this kind of leeway. See, the thing is, this end crystal needs to explode instantaneously, and that means that the moment the skulk sensor hears from it, it should immediately blow up the crystal. There's no waiting periods here. Which is why I kind of wanted to iterate on the fire idea, because I wanted to look for a more practical way to instantaneously detonate crystals. And there's a big reason why I chose to call fire a not practical way of blowing up an end crystal, because although they can burn forever in the right conditions, like on top of netherrack, they're loud, and I know this is a moot point. I've cranked up my master volume to three times the normal level, and I'm practically surrounded by it. But any sort of noise that doesn't really belong, that's fire inside of your base, is suspicion. And suspicion is super bad for any sort of trap. So as convenient as fire might seem, it's not our way here. For a brief moment I actually stopped to consider lava as an option because, you know, fire to lava, but it's even louder so it wouldn't really fit my criteria, but just because an idea doesn't work doesn't mean that it's inherently bad, because this idea led to another and now we have the lava cauldron. You see, lava cauldrons, you might not know this, but they actually have a lot of really nice technical uses in engineering, and the main one is for minecart yeeting. Because the thing is that when minecarts turn into a curve, they actually clip into this red block here, even if that's a solid block, so we can get the minecarts hitbox to clip with the lava inside the cauldron, causing it to be immediately destroyed. I thought I could apply a similar idea to end crystals, where we have kind of imitation fire, and this actually works. The lava cauldron exhibits the exact same properties I'm looking for in the fire, without actually making any noise. And there's a bunch of finer details to why the end crystal only blows up when it starts moving and it's on fire, but it's not really worth getting into those. 
And it's these new developments that kind of lead us to the basis of our first design. Here we've got a end crystal kind of floating inside of this lava cauldron, that's our source of fire, and we've also got the skulk sensor with this setup of wool. This setup of wool kind of establishes the cone of detection that we're looking for in the system, which is about a 5x5, but there'll be other options later. And we've also got a piston here that will just move this chain of blocks and that'll detonate the crystal. I can show that to you right now. Whoops. And it practically explodes instantly, there's not a whole lot to see. But we've got a problem. This stone block right here. So apparently this cauldron right here has a blast resistance of 2. Which, all things considered, is actually really low. The stone that we're blowing a metric buttload of here is blast resistance 6. But what matters is that it's soaking up just enough of the explosive wave of this end crystal that is not quite reaching this final stone block in the back here. This is really such a minor issue that it doesn't warrant a complete redesign over, but sometimes the problem is a little bit worse than just one block, so I kind of decided to change things up a bit. Quick side note, on the topic of blast resistance, in all these tests here I'm actually showing myself using stone, but really you can actually use any block that isn't explicitly blast proof. Here I'm using end stone and all of this gets blown up completely fine, even though it's just about the highest blast grade material that can actually still be blown up. So onto the redesign, I'm going to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what was going through my head, because although for you it might seem quite intuitive to jump from one source of damage, lava cauldrons, to another one, cacti, for me it's really unintuitive, because the wiki, which is what I was going off of, kind of explicitly states that you need the end crystal to be on fire for the mechanic to work, and last I checked cacti do not set things on fire, so Checking this was kind of a way out of the way solution, and it's not just that any damage works, because there are definitely sources of damage that don't blow up end crystals. I'm talking firework rockets, for example. Anyways, by whatever unholy miracle, this ends up working, so I guess I don't really care. I still want to mention, though, that it occasionally does leave corners, like this one, for example, or this one, but the important thing is that these are caused by RNG, randomness, weirdness, and not really by a design flaw. Plus it only happens about a fifth of the time in any of the corners, meaning that we did address the issue of that happening almost every time in specifically that corner. So the last thing I'll touch on uh, about the explosive pitfalls is these three designs here. I've got three of them, they all look relatively similar. Cactus is in the same spot, the only difference is the wool and the skulk sensor. In case you couldn't guess, they are detection ranges. See, you might have a variety of situations, and this first one is great for open fields, because it's very probable that you'll catch a sprint jumper more easily with this method, as it begins to explode before they're even on the design, so it's far more likely that you'll catch them that way. This is better for like maybe walkways or certain setups where they won't be likely to be sprint jumping as fast, maybe just normal sprinting you'll catch them that way. And this last design is very, very small detection range, maybe just this central 3x3. Three three. Not sure where you could use this, but I designed it anyway, so kind of pick whatever suits your situation, I guess. Alright, so let's imagine you're a little bit cheaper into your world. You don't got an end crystal, but you somehow still have skulk sensors. Anyways, it's not important to the details. These are cheaper, sand-based pitfall designs. What they do instead is they use the classic sand sign trick, but a more modern variant, using skulk sensor detection. There's a lot of very neat design decisions that I'll go into in a moment, but this is generally how they work. So you've seen a little bit of it working, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about how it works. See, there's a couple neat design things that we do, and it's actually super important to how this functions over the end crystal. The big difference is, well, there's no end crystal, and what this actually means is we can't rely on the explosion to destroy this component tree, meaning we kind of have to do our best to make sure that the player doesn't land on it. And the first thing we do is we push up a column right here, two block high column, which kind of prevents players from accidentally jumping onto it. It's still possible for them to land on it somehow, but they often might just fall off out of panic. Now, another thing we do is we keep the design very slim, and this means that any players falling down won't land on excess componentry below the trap. 
And lastly, we cut out all the wool by having the skulk sensor in the actual design so low that its sphere of detection only barely pokes up above the surface, and this creates the field in which we're detecting without using the wool to kind of coalesce it into a much more focused ring. There is actually another design that I've put together that doesn't end up using the skulk vein, coral fan, or amethyst shard in here, and instead just opts for signs, but it's slightly slower. I'm not going to get into the huge details about that, but it just means that your trap is going to be slightly less reactive. Last important thing I kind of wanted to mention in the video that doesn't really relate to pitfalls, but it's somewhat on the subject of trapping. This is a pretty neat setup where you can put essentially creepers or any mob inside of the floor that you've constructed by using pistons or whatever. And then if you put a piston with a slime block underneath it, skulk sensor, and some kind of repeater or instant wire, you can create a pretty nice jump scare trap to, I guess, prank your friends. It's also somewhat lethal, but generally anybody with fast enough reactions can make it out in time. And it's also kind of up to you how big of a firepower setup you're willing to put into it, because if for all you care, you could load in some charged creepers as well, and this would have a similar effect. You could also have a slowness 4 potion to make it a little bit more difficult to escape. There's really a lot you can do with this trap. You could even put zombies with axes and that would also be pretty effective. Ultimately, you can use this mob of pop-up style of trap for a variety of purposes, so feel free to experiment with that as well. Anyways, if you like the kind of content that I make, make sure to check out my other stuff, like and subscribe. But if you're looking to build any of these things, I think that it's probably best that, even though they're quite simple, I'll just provide a world download containing this entire setup, and you can use them to your heart's content. And that'll be it for today, and I'll see you next time.